Now, my guest today is NSW and ACT Synod Moderator of the Uniting Church in Australia, the Reverend Simon Hansford. Welcome, Simon. Thanks, Keith. Good to be here. Yeah, that's a real handful, all that title, you know. <laughs> now, but you've been a minister, give us an idea, you've been a minister for some years now, ordained in the early 90s, is that, is that right? Yeah, ordained in 1990, yeah, and uh, spent some time in Dubbo and in Queanbeyan and in the New England Northwest and now in town. Dubbo was for quite a considerable time. 12 years in Dubbo, yeah, fantastic yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, did you really? You really feel that was a definitive time for you? Yeah, and very... Uh, very important in shaping my thinking about myself and about ministry and being in a community that was so different to my growing up in Sydney. Yeah. But your, your most recent local parish, of course, is Tamworth. Yeah, so Tamworth and Dubbo are similar and dissimilar. Well, we know yeah. Tamworth is, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, the place. <laughs> the country so, music, indeed. Yeah, and did you, did you get engaged with that kind of thing? Yeah, well, our, our church actually hosts um, um, a band or bands all week during the festival, and where there are gospel services and gospel breakfasts, and there's a range of things that go on, and the town is uh, transformed for that, that 10 days to... You know, yeah, yeah. Tell us uh, how you're finding the moderator's role. It's been really good. I, I, was, I was really worried it'd be all about baby kissing and ribbon, ribbon cutting, and that hasn't been the case at all. Been a whole lot of really um, good ways of engaging about conversations about faith and about the church. But I think perhaps most importantly about how we engage in the world around us. And I've been able to have conversations that help us think those things through more effectively. And I'm really pleased about that. And tell us about the, the kind of church. The United Church is a very varied church in terms of the kind of churches and size of churches and, and locations. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, in the rural church through to the city, you'll find congregations that are very, very large and very, very small. And I think um, in many ways we haven't fully moved on from our heritage of the three churches that came together. So there's often towns and suburbs where there are churches very nearby and those sort of, those can cause either fra fraction or struggles or they can be a great sign of strength because they can have different flavours and different purposes. Yeah. And, and, and really, if you're going to be true to New South Wales, it's important to be in the rural areas, isn't it? Yes. Important. Well, I think the rural church is, is critical because the thing is, I think often we mistake the church as being about an isolated group, but in fact, especially in the rural community, we're engaged in a whole range of ways in the world around us, and that's a great sign for the church. And obviously, I mean, I do know the people in the mega churches, but I yep. do think we have a, a unique role in some of these small communities to maintain the flag of faith that the... the Absolutely, and I, and I think too, it, and I, in the best sense of the word, a pragmatic sense of faith too, that faith gets involved, faith in Jesus Christ calls us into the community. Faith says you'll help with the fencing after the fire. Faith says you'll help with um, bringing food during the drought. Faith is not just isolate, but very much calling us into the world around us. I mean, I've spoken to moderators at different times and they yeah. often talk about uh, things that arise and the church being in there first. We're, we're if you like, yep. part of the, the emergency services of the world. Absolutely. Well, I was driving here this morning and they were talking about the big catastrophe fires and our chaplaincy program of disaster recovery were there first, engaging in the community and providing great support. Yeah, absolutely. How did your faith impact with the role that you do now? Well, I think for me, it, 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 the question that I was concerned about was that I didn't want to become an office person or a city-based person, and that hasn't happened at all. So my faith really... I think my faith keeps me impatient and irritated about being too confined to one particular space. And that's a reminder that Jesus calls us into the world. And also too, I'm, I'm not that tolerant of just being in church conversations. I want to be involved in how do we engage in the world? How do we serve the world? How do we, like your suicide video just then, how do we talk to people at the critical times of their lives rather than just be decorative or be calling from the sidelines? Mm. That's what my faith calls me. And, and as moderator, I want to encourage our church to be both telling the story about how our faith works, but also engaging helpfully and hopefully in the world around us. Yeah. And is hope really part of what you want to say? Yeah, and I think we, we use the word hope, as you know, like we hope it rains or I hope this thing comes yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. That isn't the hope at all I'm talking about. I'm talking about a hope that says we believe in a God where life comes from death. We believe in a God who raises Jesus from death. We believe in a God who rests hope from darkness. And that's the hope we're calling upon to believe in, that, that despite struggles, despite the drought right now at our, at our rural communities, we are loved, we are valued there is possibility of community and support and strength from all around us. And there's a God who is with us. And do you feel sustained yourself by the church? Yeah, I do. It's, it's, uh, it's interesting, being in the rural church, often you're a bit more separated from the, the synod stuff. Yeah. But I do feel supported and I, and I feel, people talk about you know, being prayed for. I have folk who tell me all the time that they're praying for me every day. And I find that humbling and extraordinary 
uh, uh, there's a little old lady in Tamworth who says to me, you know, she says, I pray for you every day. Mm. And it, it feels like she does. Mm -hmm. And that to me is a mm -hmm. great gift. And certainly being part of the church in a way that I hadn't experienced before. And what's the biggest challenge the church faces? I'm not now talking about um, just sexuality or, or life and death issues. I'm talking about the church as a whole. What's the biggest issue that it, it really has to tackle? Well, I, I think when I first started in ministry 28, 30 years ago, I think the church had an accepted and um, normalised part of the community. And that isn't true now. Mm -hmm. I think the credibility we may have had 30 years ago that was automatically given to us mm -hmm. has changed and often through our own fault. Mm -hmm. So the question I think for the church is how we prove our credibility, prove the quality of our witness and our ministry, and not just by saying, look at the old days, what are those things, like Wesley Mission does, what are those things that we're doing right now that make a real hopeful difference to people's lives? And that's where the challenge will be because I think uh, the church around the world is saying, we're preaching the truth, but if folk aren't listening, we have to be able to engage with people in the community. Simon, thanks for sharing with us from the heart oh. a bit about yourself. And, and although we can't all promise everybody that's sharing this to pray for you every day, there will be people that know you a bit better now and will be able to put a face to the name when they hear it. Thanks, Keith.